Welcome to the Back to the Bricks podcast, a new podcast about sports, faith, and culture. I'm Justin. And I'm Nick. Close friends turn mid-major rivals. Join us as we venture back to the Bricks. Welcome back to the Bricks. We are excited and ecstatic, quite frankly, to be joined by uh, a guest this week, um, catcher in the Reds organization, Tyler Stevenson, a young guy, uh, just a few months older than me and uh, just a few months older than Justin as well. So super awesome time that we had talking with him and we think you'll really enjoy talking about baseball and faith. Um, so we'll get right into it. Welcome back to the Bricks. We uh, have the privilege of having special guest um, Reds catcher Tyler Stevenson with us. Um, we'll just jump right into it, Tyler. So with quarantine and everything going on, what have, what have you been up to? How's your life been going with, with everything going on? It's, it's, it's been good. Um, I mean, I'm here in Atlanta where I'm from and um, I've pretty much just been chilling at home. And um, so obviously we came home from spring training, everything got shut down. And um, I want to say I was working out for about a week at our, a week or two at our facility. I work on the off season and then um, like Georgia pretty much had like a stay at home policy and a bunch of businesses um, shut down. So I was fortunate enough that our, uh, the head guy there let us take home a bunch of equipment. So I was doing temporary workouts in my garage uh, for about two weeks. And uh, so, I mean, it was fun. It's uh, like, I know I've talked to some people. Um, you see like a bunch of athletes and guys doing different stuff. Uh, like with workouts, like people doing sandbags and guys just picking up heavy rocks and just doing stuff. So it's been cool to see kind of guys doing different things. Um, but yeah, it's been good, and um, I know Georgia's kind of been the guinea pig. They're kind of the first states to open up, so um, hopefully we have some positive uh, signs going forward and stuff. But I mean, it's been good. I've been spending time with family and stuff, so it's it's weird being home uh, during this time because I've I mean I couldn't tell you the last time I've been off in the summer. <laughs> Just, I mean, who knows? And I know uh, Mother's Day is Sunday. My mom's super happy because. Um, we haven't had we haven't been able to spend Mother's Day probably since high school, so it's about five years ago. So it's been good. That's crazy just to hear that because we we hear baseball guys' schedules are insane, but just hearing it from firsthand from you guys just makes it a little more real. So, what's been your favorite or your funniest moment um, of quarantine? You would say funniest moment. I don't know if there's any like funny moments. Um, it's just pretty much, honestly, I've just been sitting inside with my parents and, uh, um, my mom is actually making masks, um, her and a couple other of, of like her friends. Um, so she's been, she's been doing a lot of good, good. And, um, she's been making masks and people are coming to pick them up and they've been taking them to hospitals and stuff. And, um, which has been great. And there's a tree that fell in my backyard <laughs> last, last week or two weekends ago, my dad and I, had to chainsaw it up and stuff. So I'm honest and we're just taking this day by day and whatever the day brings and go ahead and do. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're all, I think we're all in the same boat there, just mm -hmm. living day by day and seeing what each day brings for us. So you kind of hit all that with the tree. I'm sure the tree was a little bit of a workout. So <laughs> what does, what's your training look like, like specifically for you? I know you said you got to bring some stuff home, but what's it, yeah. what's that look like? Uh, pretty much it's the same as what um, I do in the off season. And so I've been able to, I think it's been about a week that everything's kind of been opened up and I've been able to go back to my facility and do our, do normal lifts. Obviously um, we're kind of spread out throughout the day. So I think there's like groups of like four guys that go in and do everything. It's been pretty normal in terms of my lifts and just standard, standard lifts and stuff. And um, I think the big, the hardest thing during this time has been, um, like hitting and doing all that stuff because some of those facilities haven't been open and um, it's hard to kind of find people to, to hit or do anything. So I know there's during that stretch, my neighbor actually had a, uh, like a soft toss net for like whenever you're younger. And I was hitting my backyard for about two weeks off of that. So, I mean, it, luckily, um, everything's kind of opened up. So I've been able to do more, but especially during that, those two weeks um, that everything kind of shut down, it, it was pretty tough to kind of do normal, normal things. 
So, yeah, I'm sure it's hard. You don't you don't see uh, big league pitchers laying around all over the place. You can't exactly. get down the street and so, find them all the time. So no, so yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's been hard. So we'll uh, we'll jump into the faith side of things here. I'll I'll ask you the first question, and then we'll let Nick jump in with some questions. So, um, when did you begin to follow Jesus? Kind of like what what was your what's your story a little bit, and then yeah. what kind of changed in your life? What what did Jesus change in your life with 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 your relationship with Him? Yeah. So I mean, I've I grew up going to church, and uh, I mean. I give a lot of credit to my girlfriend who I'm dating now. Um, so growing up, going through communion, doing all that stuff when I was younger. And then it was probably when I was eight or so, or like when baseball really kind of took off for me. I mean, when I was eight years old, I moved to East Cobb, um, which is a baseball organization. I don't know if you're familiar with like the Midland Redskins, which is big up in Ohio area. It's the same thing, but like down, down south, and it's super close to my house. So that's when I kind of took that transition into baseball and it turned into honestly it's just the amount of sacrifices I've had to do baseball baseball and I mean I've been fortunate and blessed to be at the position I am but I had to sacrifice a lot um couldn't really go to church on Sundays because we were doing tournaments and I mean it was just something we had to deal with and especially like going into school like I think I missed my first homecoming my freshman year high school because I had baseball so I mean we've had to sacrifice a whole bunch of things for it um, but so transition into baseball, it was kind of, it was tough to get in that routine. And I, I mean, I, I'm kind of guilty of it that I did kind of lack my faith up until really I got to pro ball. And even the first couple of years of pro ball, it was, it was kind of a tough, it's, it was, it was, it was just tough because it was, it was new for me for getting drafted and not, not knowing what it's like. And. Um, I mean, it's kind of easier said than done until people kind of see what baseball players and minor league baseballs go through. And so it was really last season when I was in Chattanooga that the chaplain there, Paul Payne, um, I don't know. It just, he, obviously we would have people come in every Sundays and we'd do a service and stuff. Um, But he was someone that I could really click with and he understood me and I understood him. And really took it. I mean, that was kind of the big step forward for me. And um, especially just transitioning into the off season and um, spending time with my girlfriend. Like when I've been there, I mean, obviously during this time, churches are closed. and We've been able to watch, um, watch churches and stuff. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's really kind of my story with everything. And um, I know I'm not perfect by any means now, and I still have a, a bunch of room to grow. And um, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with Michael Lorenzen, but that's someone who obviously is very important, or I mean, not important, but like he has a big role in in faith in his life and stuff. And that's someone that I kind of look up to. And obviously I want to follow his footsteps in a way, um, just whatever he's been able to do on and off the field. So I'm kind of fortunate to be in the same organization and have had many encounters with him. Um, So, so yeah. Yeah, you talk about um, people that have influenced you. I think you kind of answered the, where I was going next. You talked about your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And you talked about Chaplin and Chattanooga. During this season of quarantine and COVID-19 and not playing baseball the way you're supposed to be, like who would you say now is like the most influential, even even just during this time? Mm. Honestly, I'd probably have to say my girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. I mean, she's – we have a good balance of – kind of challenging each other and especially when like one of us is lacking we can kind of fall on each other and kind of support each other and um I mean it's it's got a good balance of both and um obviously she challenged me to be the best individual I can and I do the same for her um and obviously pushing each other to take our next steps because um like I know I forgot who but the, the other podcast I did with the guy in Cincinnati, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Matt? Or, or what was his name? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Matt. It was, yeah. Um, I was right. Um, <laughs> it was the same. But I, was, I remember telling him that, obviously, with how the season goes, but, like, more than likely I was probably going to be getting engaged sometime this summer. So, I mean, I, we, we were kind of transitioning into that process of our relationship. And 
especially what she's talked about and like what we have talked about is me being obviously that man in the household to lead her and a family and kids potentially when we get to that point and stuff. So obviously like during this time and every step in the future is just molding myself to become that individual when that time comes. So. Yeah. I think it's really interesting hearing you talk Tyler, just about like the, the girlfriend engagement, baseball, yeah. everything comes together. Like, uh, like I think it's crazy for me um, as a sports fan growing up, it was like guys who played in college, guys who played in the pros, they were so old. And then I got to college and I was like watching college football and it was like, Oh, these guys are younger than me that are the studs uh -huh. right now. And it's exactly. like, we're, you know, we're all within a few months of each other, you know, that are talking to each other right now. And like mm -hmm. my life looks very different. My everyday, you know, my everyday teaching job does not look like yours, but I think it's yeah. interesting that like one, the season is kind of affecting us in the same way. Mm -hmm. And, and two, like that you're going through the same, the same kinds of things, but it's very different for you. Right. Cause you're a professional baseball player. And so I think yeah. it's, it's kind of cool for me even to hear the, the perspective of like, I play professional baseball and I do these things that normal people don't do, but I also, you know, have the same kind of relationships and same kind of, you know, things related to mm -hmm. that. So with, with that said, like, what would you say, even as a professional baseball player, like what, what brings you back to Jesus? What, why do you keep coming back? Like what's something that you, you found and, and know to be true for you? Hmm. I kind of go back. I think a big eye-opening um, moment and kind of that, that Jesus moment that everybody kind of talks about. Um, so my dad was diagnosed with colon cancer, like almost stage four. So it was like as close to stage four as possible. Um, but it was stage three. And I think it was eighth grade when I, when obviously I found out. And um, I remember going through that process and I, I, mean, I can still remember the day what it was like whenever my mom and dad came in the room with my sister and I and pretty much like told us what was going on. And so he tells us and then so that was my eighth grade year and then I think it was my sister's junior year of um, high school and pretty much what he told us was like this is my battle and I'm going to take care of it like you guys don't need to worry and for me it was like go continue baseball, continue giving it all, same thing with my sister. And she, she was on the swim team. And then I go out that summer and it was like I won player of the year for 14 year old, like had the best summer of my life. And then my sister qualified for, um, she, she was, she went out to, what was it? It was something in Stanford, but she was a 10th of a second away from qualifying from an Olympic trial cut. And um, so kind of that moment for both of us. And then I remember going to the church. There was a healing service um, that we went to one night. And obviously we go there, we pray, we do everything. And then my dad's next appointment, it was like just the cancer was gone. And like it, it just, there, there's no way to describe it. There's no way to do anything else, but just the power of prayer. Um, so I think kind of, that's kind of, that was kind of the first moment of like, just, I don't know, the power of prayer and just how he can do anything really. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, and I think even like you said earlier, like, like faith became, you know, kind of refreshed for you last season, but even yeah. those moments, like you can, you can draw back to and say like, God showed up in this moment in a very specific way. And so it's not mm -hmm. like, you know, God wasn't working in your life. So I think that's super awesome. Yeah. That, you know, it wasn't just on field success. Obviously you've had a lot of that, you know, leading up to becoming a part of the Reds organization, but mm -hmm. you know, God was al always working and always working in your family and even leading you to, to the moment, you know, to meet people in your life now that could influence you positively. So I think that's awesome. The fellowship of Christian athletes is touching thousands of lives in and around the city of Cincinnati. Since 1954, FCA has been using the platform of sport to reach coaches and athletes at the professional, collegiate, high school, junior high school, and youth level. FCA is actively seeking to engage, equip, and empower coaches and athletes to unite, inspire, and change the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. To find out more about the ministry of FCA in Cincinnati, visit their website at www.cincinnatifca.org. Before I jump into baseball, I just want to tell you, like, we had in my hometown, um, we actually had two girls who got severely injured in a car accident yesterday. 
Um, and so yeah. it's just awesome to be reminded of how prayer works and how God is. So I'm just going to say thanks um, for that that story and reminding us of that. And I'm sure there's some people from my hometown that will listen and be, um, their faith will be a little reaffirmed through that and, and stuff. So I just want to say thanks for that, that story yeah. first off. But then – I'm a huge Reds fan. Nick is a Reds fan. I'm from Cincinnati. My family is Reds crazy, always has been, always will be. Um, I remember being young. My grandpa sat me down and showed me the Wire to Wire documentary. Um, so it's just something that's always been um, there for us. So talking to a, somebody in the Reds organization is is kind of cool, um, just personally for me. So um, what makes, at any level, putting on that um, Reds uniform um, so special for you? I think, like, especially it was, um, I think it's just the biggest thing is just the history. Obviously, being the first professional baseball season or team put together. And um, I know last year was like the 150th uh, anniversary. Um, so, obviously, I know the guys at the big league level can probably preach more what it means. Um, but in terms of the organization and everybody I've met and what they've done for me is, I mean, I just can't, I mean, I'm just very fortunate and blessed just because, I mean, they've welcomed me in with open arms and they've helped transition me into who I am today. And um, I think just baseball has been so much of my life. And when I was 14 years old and when I was in high school, I was playing baseball all year round. And in a sense, it still feels like that to the day. And obviously like um, I found the video when we were watching the NFL draft of um, when I got drafted um, by the Reds, and it was it was cool. Um, it was a video. I got invited to go up to New York to be there, but I ended up staying at home. And, like I had my whole like high school baseball team. I had everybody there, and just watch. Obviously, me get drafted, and everybody was dogpiled me. I mean, it was something I'll never forget. And I think the big eye-opening moment for me that like can say that I made it will be probably the day that obviously I make my debut into walk in a big league stadium to walk out. I think that's going to be the biggest eye opening. and just like meaningful moment, not only for the Reds, but just for everything that I've worked hard for. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't, obviously I'll never, we'll never have that moment, but I, I can imagine what that would, what that'll be like for you when you yeah. get to step out into the show, I guess, as they call it. So yeah. um, what has been, What's been your favorite professional moment so far? Like playing baseball at any level um, in the in the big leagues. What's been your favorite moment so far? I think it was when I was in Daytona. I had a uh, walk off home run, um, which was which was pretty cool because everybody obviously dreams about hitting a walk off, and then that was my. I think I'd had a, like a couple walk off hits um, throughout my career, but I think it was it was probably the coolest one, especially hitting a home run and I remember hitting it. And then once I remember uh, seeing it went over, I, I mean, I can't remember. I blacked out. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't <laughs> tell you what happened after that. So it, it was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I imagine hitting a, a walk off home runs a little, a little better than just hitting a single, you know, like yeah. <laughs> getting that yeah, walk off home sure. run moments, probably, probably a little better. Yeah, sure. Um, so being away from teammates, I mean, and you said it playing baseball since all year round, since you were 14, yeah. like, your teammates have been a big part of your life every year. So how are you staying connected with teammates um, during this, during this quarantine break? Um, so I know there's a, there's a handful of us who are in a big group message and we'll kind of reach out um, to everybody once in a while. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Taylor Tramiel, but obviously he was with us and got traded over and me and him are beyond brothers really now. I mean, consider him a best friend and a brother and someone I care about a lot. And he loved, uh, he lives um, not too far from me. And um, so obviously I'll reach out to him quite a bit. And I know he's not with us anymore, but me, him and a couple other guys, we're in a big group message and uh, probably at least once a week, we'll try to just see how everybody's doing and um, just see what, what, what they've been up to just because it's so hard for everybody to do anything right now. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So, what are your hopes? I mean, obviously, from everything I've read and probably every everything I looked at, you were at some point going to probably get called up this year, um, Lord mm -hmm. willing. So what are your hopes for whatever the MLB decides to do with the season um, after it gets after it's safe to get back and play? 
I mean, I think the biggest thing is just safety and just obviously what they come come out. Um, but, I mean, I think a bunch of us are just ready to play. And, um, I mean, hopefully, obviously, you just hear, you just hear all these rumors and stuff. And I, all I know is what I've heard uh, out on Twitter and stuff. Um, but hopefully soon um, we'll hear some answers. And, um, I mean, yeah, especially with there uh, being a possibility of being called up. I mean, I, no one really knows how the season's going to be, if it's going to be in Cincinnati or if it's going to be in Arizona where spring training complex is at. And, I mean, who knows? There's been a number of possibilities and stuff. So, um, just kind of wait till we <laughs> – Till I guess we hear something, and then obviously we'll make some adjustments and some plans um, when we get that. But obviously, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, that's the goal to be in big leagues and do everything I can to make that happen this year. Right. Selfishly, I hope it takes place in Cincinnati because um, <laughs> being, being a Reds fan, I want it to be in in Cincy. So, um, Nick, you want to throw out the last question here? And- yeah, I was just going to go off what you said, Justin. I really hope you don't make your your <laughs> debut in the show in Arizona. I'll just put that out there because I'd like that's it what to be best, in Cincinnati. Yeah. <laughs> my my but, best friend, um, my best friend, um, he was like, selfishly, I don't want that to happen because then I wouldn't be able to. He was like, I want, I want, obviously, I want you to play this year, but it's like part of me doesn't want, or like I don't want you to because I'm not going to be able to be at your big league debut um and stuff so it's funny but obviously we have no control over that and whatever happens happens so it is what it is yeah absolutely i mean you know like a pinch hit walk off on opening day wouldn't be a bad situation you know come off the (laughs) bench you know save the team you know that wouldn't be a bad situation that's happened before so we're just going to speak that into existence and the lord's going to will you to get get in that situation so we're going to come back in cincinnati hopefully and you'll hit that home run that'd be awesome power Um, of prayer there you go that's that's right right. man like we can we can pray about those kind of things right you know like i think that's what even and i think that's what's you know to kind of wrap up what you've talked about right like uh you've experienced god in a lot of different ways in your baseball career and in your family and, and like big ways and, you know, little ways too. Right. And so I think it's, it's kind of fun to, to laugh and joke about like, I want this to happen for this baseball team. But I think, you know, one, I think historically it's been a long time since our prayers have been answered. And two, I think we should keep praying. So we're going to keep praying about the red legs and keep keep praying that you get called up in the right situation. Uh, But with that said, um, during this season, like if you, if you had to give like our listeners just one thing, to like focus on or to challenge them with, what would you say as, as we continue on for who knows how long here in Ohio and just as a country, what would you say to challenge them? Uh, I mean, just continue to grow. And I kind of thought about this, like, so when I was watching um, our Easter service, um, I watched Pass the City and I was, I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but um, Tim Tebow talked and Sadie, um, Robertson, Robinson, or whatever. She has a new last name, but I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But obviously they talked and um, obviously a big thing going on, the coronavirus and everything. But pretty much what they were trying to say um, is just during this time that obviously everybody is looking for a cure, obviously for the virus, but the Holy Spirit is our cure and obviously during this time not letting it go to waste because in a sense like this is this has been a great time for people to kind of take a step back from it, kind of honestly everything so just during this time don't let it go to waste and just continue to grow as an individual and in your faith because obviously the power of prayer like i said and what he's done um this is something that can never be replaced absolutely that's a great place to end yeah that's awesome uh, Tyler, obviously, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for fitting us into yeah. your quarantine workout schedule and <laughs> laughing with us a little bit about the red legs. And uh, we, we and a lot of people will look very forward to your Cincinnati debut. So thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Ho- hopefully, hopefully sooner than later. That's right. Absolutely. absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Back to the Bricks podcast. We'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts, send this podcast to a friend, or share this episode on your Instagram story. We'll see you back on the bricks next time.